Say it when you're ready. Uh, waiting on props. Lock it up. Roll sound. Our intercession semester here at the college is a film project. All the students work together. They all have their own particular job titles that they have to work under. Uh, so some people might be the lighting department, some people might be the camera department, some people might be the sound department, and so on. Uh, from there, the students will actually help to develop a script. They'll do all the pre-production work um, for the film. Uh, so meaning that they'll uh, they'll do all the planning, whether it's shot planning, whether it's locations planning, whether it's costume planning and props planning. The costuming was actually done more so in pre-production. Um, it was more, more or less me running around to different look, different places, different stores, and just picking things that look period accurate. Because in, in the film we have two periods in history that we film in. Um, one was in the 1920s and one is in the 1970s. So I had two eras of history to work with and uh, I needed to get costumes that were authentic to the period of history. Well, as assistant director, my duties included doing the daily schedules, shot lists, and call sheets for the actors. I had to let all the actors know about their call times. You know, we go into copyright law and how we found out who owns or who, who owns the publishing rights and have an email. We did it all through our uh, legal process, and we uh, got all that straightened out. And there's so many logistics in making a film that people don't realize, as you can see from the behind the scenes. Uh, this is really exciting. This is our first day of shooting. Yeah. Scene 29, shot four. <laughs> so on day one, which was Monday, we started out with what was possibly the most complex scene in the film to shoot, because we had our two actors out on a boat in the lake, ocean, but Lake. Mark it. Scene 29, shot three, take two. Hey, man, the building couldn't come for me out here. Huh? Ashton, take five. Take it from Randy, hauling him in. This scene was probably the most complex scene because we actually had a stunt, threw a kid in the water, several other complications. Feels good. Feels good. We're only an hour behind, too. Uh, Manny? Manny? Keyword only.
being a grip fits in the overall production by uh, we are responsible for most of the camera movement on set so anything that has to deal with a dolly or a jib we have to set up Well, dollies for a side-to-side -side motion, or it's just like a camera pretty much just on a track, and we're just moving it wherever direction we need to go. So day two, we were shooting exteriors at Emil's house, which was uh, pretty interesting because the wind kept changing between shots. So there was some shots where it was blowing like crazy and other shots there was none at all. Uh, the typical day on set was first setting up and waiting for the rest of the crew to set up the scene so I can capture the sound from the actors. Well, I'm sound recorder, so if there's no sound, and all you got is the sound from the camera, which is not that best. It's called v Video Village, double V. Uh, what it is, the director sits here, while the producer sits here, and they can actually watch the video feed from the camera instead of getting soaked up in the rain. And, well, this is also my section for recording sound. Uh, we also had a bit of rain. It didn't show up on camera, but the actors were getting wet. Wednesday was an interesting day as well because we were shooting at a beach in Black Duck Brook. We had a very good rhythm going for the first part of the shoot. It was going great. We were knocking out shots. We had B cam on different close ups. We were ahead of schedule. There's a lot of teamwork involved on set, and uh, a set really goes by how good the team could synergize around each other. We are here, beginning of day four, Thursday. We are shooting the interiors of Neil's house. It's pretty chilly out here, but I think it's going to be even colder in there. So, I wouldn't get too happy, guys. So what we're doing here is, uh, you see it's really gray out, so we're making it so it looks like it's five o'clock inside. We're just kind of cheating the light to build it through the window in an orange tone like sunset. Uh, I can see something in that room. Or no generator's gone.
I do enjoy uh, being the director of photography, although it can be stressful at times because you have direct control over what the uh, what shows on the camera in the end. If you screw up, basically, you just screwed up everything. <laughs> we shot this movie on the Blackmagic 4K production camera. Uh, it's the first time we've actually used it for an intercession film. A typical day on set for me is uh, operating the camera, uh, instructing the gaffer and grips on what I'll need to kind of build the shot. When you're composing a shot, you put a lot of time into trying to balance the frame, I guess, so, you know, there's no big empty spaces or things aren't off to the side too far, so, you know, just basically making it pleasing to the eye is uh, the end goal. I think uh, what I like most about my job was just kind of seeing things go from the first stages and building it into, you know, like the final product. Seeing it evolve over time is pretty cool. That's a wrap on principal photography for Emil's Legacy. Yeah! <laughs> After the shooting is completed, we will uh, we'll go into the post-production work. And from the post-production work, all the students now have new job titles which relate to post-production, the editing. So some people might be doing the, sound, uh, the color correction, some people might be doing sound mixing, some pe people might be doing uh, uh, the EPK, the behind-the-scenes documentary. Um, so uh, they all work together to complete the project by a certain date. I think traditionally we were raising the bar on each one. Yes. And, uh, uh, you, we did this year, we, you know, like we got the Black Magic cameras, and uh, you know uh, we can compete. Uh, we got the best of gear. We can compete with any film school in Canada, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be making a very good, great film, excellent film. Well, we should remember Emil. A couple of reasons. Uh, I guess the first one because of his his love of traditional music, the violin. And we should remember Emil because he had such a huge impact on not only Newfoundland music, but Canadian music in general. I guess the second reason is that uh, I guess he represents kind of a revival of uh, traditional music uh, here uh, in Newfoundland. Because when Emil started uh, his, I guess his umpteen career as a musician, uh, people got interested once again in, in, in the kitchen party era. If you look at his uh, YouTube videos, there's lists of people who are like, long live Emile. Everyone really loved this guy and he will live on in his music just because he did something different. To use, to paraphrase uh, something that he used quite often, sa vieille du cœur, it comes from the heart. What his storytelling, like his music, came from the heart. He had all his actions, his expressions, everything involved. And I guess that, that's Emile Benoit. Let us walk with you.